In this presentation, we will fill out the Form 940, Employer's Annual Federal Unemployment FUTA Tax. A few things we want to cover before getting into the numbers for the 941. One is just to keep it separate form from. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The Form 940. The numbers being so closely related can make us think that they are related. And the number 940 being before 941 numerically, can make us think that possibly the 940 is the quarterly form and the 941s are the uh, yearly form or the annual form and it's that's not the case. The 940 form is the annual summary form. The 941s are gonna be the quarterly form. The other common thing that uh, this could lead us to believe would be that the 940 is recapping the information for the 941s. And this isn't the case either, this is wrong. But it would make logical sense for us to think, well, the 940 forms are going to give us the data on a quarterly basis for payroll tax owed to the government. And then the 940 at the end of the year, so the 941s give us quarterly, the 940 at the end of the year is going to resummarize that again as of year end. And that's not the case here. What is the case is that the 941s have different federal payroll taxes than the form 940, meaning the 941 covers the big payroll taxes of Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax. Whereas the 940, the end of the year uh, tax return, or the entire year return, only covers FUTA, federal unemployment tax, which is relatively small. So the way you want to think about this, why would that happen? Why do they do that? Um, the 940, actually, the way we're doing FUTA kind of lines up closer to how we might think of our, our forms for our taxes, our 1040s, meaning we typically have our 1040s, our employers take the money out of our wages. In other words, we make the payments throughout the year, and then we report what has happened at the end of the year one time on our, our Form 1040, and we tell the IRS, hey, here's what we earned, here's our calculation of our taxes, and here's what we already paid. And in a perfect world, they would be the same, and we wouldn't get a refund or owe any taxes. Obviously, it's not a perfect world and that's too complicated to happen on a Form 1040, but that's the idea. The same thing is gonna be true with the 940, which matches that same kind of scenario. We're gonna say, we're gonna make the payments throughout the year, just like we do with our income taxes. We will report it one time at the end of the year, and hopefully our payments that we have made match our liability calculation, which they likely will, on the Form 940, unlike our individual income tax reforms with the 1040. Uh, why don't we do that with the 941s? Why does it differ? The 941s are a lot bigger of the numbers, so I can, the IRS is more concerned with the 941s and want actual more reporting. They want not just a, a year-end form, they want a quarterly form. So they want payments during the year and they want to verify that those payments are, are lining up and being done correctly on a quarterly basis rather than an annual basis. So in other words, they're giving us a little bit more leeway on FUTA and a little less reporting requirements because probably the reason, and again, if you're looking for justification or good reasons within the tax code, you might be looking a while, but theoretically, I would think the reason would be that the amount is smaller <laughs> and therefore they're willing to allow us to just have to the annual reporting. So now that we have that, we're calculating the FUTA. It's going to be the smaller tax for, and we only need the one form for the end of the year. We've got the same EIN number that we will be reporting, the employer identification number, name, and then uh, the business and the trade. Over here, we don't have the quarters, of course, because we're not talking about quarters. If it's a min if these apply, we would check them, like an amended return or no payments to employees or the final, if it's the final return, because the business isn't going to have payroll or going out of business or whatever, then we would have that. We're going to go down to part one. First thing, 
If you have had, if you had to pay state unemployment tax in one state only, enter the state here. We're going to give the state of Nevada, and uh, and one reason is because they typically have uh, less taxes, oftentimes, or it may be more complicated, but any state would typically be similar. You might be asking, why do we need to know what state it is if it's a federal tax form? What does it matter? Doesn't the Fed treat all states the same? And uh, the, the, the reason is because remember that the federal tax here is tied to uh, the state tax in some way, meaning the way the federal law was written is that it said, you know, we're going to have an exemption. You can, you can pay less taxes if there's a state tax, which basically mandated the states to have some minimum type of suta. So and for that reason, there's kind of a link here between um, futa and suta. And we need to know, did you pay suta tax so that we know what rate we need to apply for futa? Uh, so that the state tax for the federal tax. So then B says, if you had to pay state unemployment tax in more than one state, so we're not going to deal with that here. Uh, and but you can see what the goal here same kind of goal did, did you pay state taxes if you did then you're probably going to get to have a lower federal tax rate two if you paid state wages in a state that is subject to credit reduction we're not going to deal with that here okay now we're going to get to the actual calculations so line three says total payments to all employees so if we go back to our worksheet, we're looking for total payments to all employees. And here we're gonna pick up our total. So I'm, I'm scrolling down to our worksheet. And so remember, I'm gonna scroll back up. We've got the panes frozen, which is on, if you put your cursor on A4, home tab, windows group, freeze panes and freeze the panes. Then if we scroll down, we're looking at our data that we have summed up down here. It should already be summed up in the totals. So we have the third quarter totals, we've got the fourth quarter, and we've got all of the totals. I'm gonna to make the total column now the green column. That's what we want to work with. So I'm gonna ungreen this column. I'm gonna select the entire column. I'm gonna ungreen it or make it blue. Let's make it blue instead of ungreening. And then we're gonna right click on it and go to the paint and make it blue. And if that blue is not there, you can go to the little color wheel down here, standard. And that, that's the blue we're using right there. It has to, we have to be, use a confusing blue because just to confuse people. Okay, so then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna make this green. The totals are what we're gonna be using. So we'll highlight all of this data and then right click on it and make it green. We'll make it that light green. And that's the data that we want. We're gonna scroll down just a little bit and just so we can just see that data and limit the confusion I'll limit my mistakes any help in that regard is good so now we're going to pick up the wages now note uh, the wages we're going to pick up is total earnings here total earnings uh not like we picked up on the 941s which was total earnings less uh something like the 401k or if there was a cafeteria plan we're just going to be picking up the total earnings so in other words if we add up the 941s uh, it may not add up to the total earnings on the 940 if there are things like a retirement plan and uh, group, uh, or not group insurance, but a cafeteria plan. So we're going to go back to our form here, and we're looking for the 940, and we will enter that data up top. So that's going to be the 241, 206, tab, 00. zero. All right, now here's where it gets a little confusing. We got payments exempt from FUDA. We're not gonna have anything there. And then it says total of payments made to each employee in excess of 7,000, which is a kind of funny calculation. So they want they want the number that was over the 7,000. And it, then down here it says the subtotal, which is gonna be adding these two. And then line seven says total taxable FUTA wages. So what we actually have done in our worksheet is calculate line seven, total taxable FUTA wages. We didn't calculate the amount that's over the $7,000 limit because why would we do that? You know, we calculated the amount that was taxable for FUTA and the tax. So what we're gonna do is kind of back into this number. We're gonna fill out what we know, this number and the actual tax. Then we'll back into this number. So that's kind of a tricky thing the way I usually have seen this uh, to think about this. So on our worksheet, we have FUDA wages of 
28,000. It's less than the total wages because of the cap of 7,000. Remember that just about everybody's gonna hit that cap if they've been working for the entire year. The only time someone's not gonna hit the 7,000 cap typically is if they haven't worked the entire year. Uh, if we, uh, meaning if we hired someone in, in December, then they may not hit the cap. Or if um, we laid someone off th throughout the year before they hit the cap, then they wouldn't. But for us, we've had four employees. So we had four employees. They all hit the cap times 7,000. And so that's 28,000. So nothing over 28,000 is going to be included because that's what the cap is. So we're going to pick that 20, 28,000 up. And then it, if we look over here, we already calculated FUTA, which is going to be that 28,000 times 0.006 or 168. So we already know those numbers. So if we go back over here, we can say, well, I know this number is 28,000. Let's put a comma there, make it look nice. 28,000, zero, zero. And then we'll calculate it again. So it says 28,000 times. 0.006, notice using that lower rate, the, the FUTA rate after SUDA taxes, if, if you've paid SUDA taxes, 0.006, that's the 168. So the tax is only 168, notice how, how much lower it is than Social Security and Medicare and FIT, federal income tax. So we know that, now we just need to figure out what this number is, and if this is our total wages, and this is the FUTA wages, the difference then will be total of payments made to each employee in excess. So we just need to subtract those out. So we'll pull the calculator here. We're gonna say 241,206 minus 28,000 gives us 213,206. So we'll put that here, 213 comma 206 tab 00. And that's really the essence of the form. So if we scroll down then, we then have um, part three, if there's any adjustments and so if all of the taxable food of wages you paid were excluded from the state unemployment tax uh, multiply here so meaning if you weren't subject to state tax and you didn't pay the state tax in essence you'd have to pay a higher food to tax remember they're linked so for all practical purposes for most of the time it's this low rate for FUTA because suda taxes are paid but uh, if in some certain situation they're not or whenever you read the law Note, it'll be confusing because technically the food of tax rate is higher. Uh, and then there's kind of like an exemption if you pay state taxes, SUTA, which pretty much every state requires. So, so that in essence means that this is the, the actual rate for most practical purposes. So that's basically part three. If we go down to part four, then we're gonna say total food of tax after adjustments is the 168 tab. And then the food of tax deposit. So same thing as with the 941. This is the liability. Then we need the deposit, which should be the same. If we pick up our number, we should have already made the payment. In other words, we're not picking it up here, though. This is a liability calculation. How do we know how much we deposit from the GL? So we're going to go back over here. We're going to say, here's all the cash payments we made. If we go back to the actual cash payments from our journal entry, we can see that our, this is our cash payment consisting of Social Security, Medicare, FUTA, SUTA, FIT. And then here's our second payment that was made in uh, October that includes FUTA, FUTA, FUTA. And then in November, we have the same payment journal entry, but it's a lot smaller, not including FUTA or SUTA. Why? Because everybody hit the cap which will typically be the case. We'll make a lot of SUDA and FUDA payments in the first quarter or the first months of operation, first payroll processing of period of a year, and then it'll go down drastically. So uh, these are the payments that we have made. So if we add these up, this plus this adds up to that same 168. So it's the same number. So we're like, we're saying that uh, we're good. We're good. 168 tab zero zero. So we're telling the IRS the story. Here's how much we owe. We can see the calculation and you can see the liability. Here's how much we paid. Um, and so we can tell them that same story and hopefully we, we owe nothing after that point. 
Then if we scroll down, uh, they want here in line 16, report the amount of your food to tax liability for each quarter. Do not enter the amount you deposited you deposited. If you had no liability or quarter, leave them blank. So we want to get the liability per quarter. I've already filled it out in the third quarter here. So if we go over, we may question that. You may say, hmm, that doesn't make sense. If I look at the deposits, the deposit was made here in October. Uh, and that's like the fourth quarter, October, November, December. But remember that that deposit was for uh, September's liability. In other words, if we need to get this from the register, not the deposits. If we go back to the register, uh, we can see our quarterly breakout. The whole 168 happened in the third quarter, none of it in the fourth quarter because everybody hit the limit by that time. So if we go back to our, our 940 over here, here, that's not it. That's, that's not it. Here. <laughs> We're gonna say it all happened in the third quarter. It all took place in the third quarter, and then the total will be the third quarter.